Elian, tonight we're cooking seasonal plant filled pasties with homegrown radish and beetroot salad. And now over to your hosts, Toby and Dora. And um, that's us. Hi, how are you doing? Good evening, how are you? Good, we're all good, I think. You all good? Are you good? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. So this is Dora. And that's Toby. And we are here um, in our home, so welcome to our home. This is Food Rebellion. Through uh, Extinction Rebellion, we're representing Extinction Rebellion and, and, Animal, Rebellion. and Animal Rebellion. And what we're making tonight. We are making... Da, 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 da. So basically, this is what we're making tonight. It is a plant-based um, uh, parcel with a phyllo, or not phyllo, short crust pastry. We do have a phyllo pastry version as well, though. Oh, this is a path pastry version. Oh, sorry, path pastry version. So if you fancy a different kind of pastry or that's what you have available, this is how it looks like. But tonight, I think we are going to make this version. Yeah, the short crust. And so what do we have inside? Well, we it's have really inside, good. it is amazing, amazing food. We have uh, spinach, mm -hmm. we have- Lentils. Um, lentils, and we have asparagus. And some spring onion. Oh, oh, amazing, amazing. And we also put some thyme in it for, for, for the taste and a bit mm -hmm. of salt and pepper. And the, the reason we chose these vegetables is because they're seasonal, they're based in the UK, and uh, you can get them locally, and we got them locally. Yeah. But what else have we got, which is even more local? Wow. So we have got this radish here on the side because we made the radish and beetroot salad. And the specialty of this radish is that we picked it from our garden. So it's so much locally grown that <laughs> it grew in our back garden. Um, it's actually quite easy. So if you haven't tried growing vegetables yet, I recommend maybe starting with beet. Um, Reddish. Yeah, yeah, radish. It's quite a forgiving plant. <clears throat> it's ridiculously simple, and we, you know, we were amazed, and we're so, so happy about it. So proud. So what we have here, as you can see, the red is actually raw uh, grated beetroot, and we sliced up some of the radish in it, and the green here is the leaves blanched of the beetroot. So we're using just about all of the plant, apart from this root, which uh, mm -hmm. we don't. Well, we probably could eat it, but. I think you could probably eat that. You could probably clean your teeth with it, you know, afterwards. But this is what we got. <laughs> so this is completely zero waste. We didn't waste, waste a single bit of this. Always so in terms of footprint, if this is what you could go for as someone who is aware of everything that Extinction Rebellion talks about and wants to do something great, then this is a meal that you can go for. And also, I think it's quite family friendly and children friendly because children are not even children, but people who don't like eating vegetables so much this is an easy way to sell vegetables <laughs> put them into pastry because uh, who one who doesn't like pastries that's so true and the great also one of the great things about this is you can okay. eat it warm or you can eat it cold so we the first time we made it we had it in the evening and i think we had it with mashed potato do we or salad or something on the side the next day we had it and they're just parcels and you can take it to work you can take it on mm -hmm. a picnic obviously with social distancing and as probably more local than uh, too far away, but I don't think it's too, too bad at the moment. All things are being lifted, aren't they? It's a bit strange, but. I just want to comment to back to Maida. Hi, how are you doing? And she's loving my t-shirt. So thank you so much. Uh, if you are my friend Maida, then I love you and I miss you so much. And I wish you were here and I could hug you. And this t-shirt is actually uh, from PETA, which you probably are familiar with. If not, look them up. They're an amazing and their rights group worth uh, joining or supporting or just checking out. But so I was also, okay. yeah, let's get back to the food. So the food is local, it's seasonal, and it's nutritious. And there are lots of vitamins in it. With the asparagus, you have vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, and folate. Mm. Um, spinach, you have vitamin um, calcium, a bit of iron, and vitamin C. Um, I think within the beetroot, you have folate as well. <clears throat> vitamin C, and I'm losing all the vitamins <laughs> out of my head. It's a lot of information, yeah. but... Later on, I'm going to show you an easy way uh, to see. track your minerals and vitamins without having to look up information on the <laughs> internet all over. Yeah. So that will come. But right now, uh, I think we just should mention about the lentils in the food. So we made a meal. It is an easy transition or an easy swap for people who are just looking into a plant-based or vegan diet for environmental reasons or because of animal rights or um, animal abuse reasons or because of their health. There are multiple reasons why people want to look at this, which is probably the reason why Extinction Rebellion promoted only plant-based food in the rebellions, both October and April. Yeah, yeah, that was huge, that was wonderful. Yeah, amazing. And if you are looking for a swap, you probably were about 
what is happening what what happens with the protein because they're used to having so much protein from meat but but um protein basically the protein in the meat uh, is is actually protein from plants so the animals eat the plants get the protein and it goes into their flesh and sadly a lot of people eat the flesh um but then they absorb the protein from the flesh but in in essence we can eat the uh, the vegetables and and cut out the middle animal as well or middle man so we can just go straight for the vegetables and so much so many so much protein goes in to raising an animal that it's sort of it's not protein positive as, as it were when you eat the the meat because so much protein has gone in you get only a certain amount of protein whereas with if you eat directly the beans and the, and the lentils yeah. and kale and so on and so forth um it actually goes directly into you it's plant-based so your system is it's it's alkaline, yeah. it's alkaline so it actually absorbs it really really quickly but i'm going to also show you later on how much protein you exactly get from this meal i made a calculation so it's coming up later and just want to give a big shout out to umu nikki tj and um Kate, Kate, Katie? Katie. i'm not, not sure i'm sorry if you mispronounced your name thanks so much for commenting and also just wanted to welcome everybody on extinction rebellion facebook youtube instagram anime rebellion facebook where else twitter, twitter as well so welcome all, welcome one. And please ask any question you might have about the meal or about the plant-based lifestyle or about Animal Rebellion, even about Extinction Rebellion or pizza or... Oh yeah, or this. <laughs> or Toby. <laughs> or me. Ask any question, please comment, and we are going to try to get back to you as soon as we can. So one of the reasons uh, we're, we're pushing a plant-based uh, plant food here is because um, animal agriculture is a huge, has a huge impact on, on the environment. What? <laughs> what has a huge impact on the environment and um uh we actually grow a huge amount of crops and use up a huge amount of land in order to feed the animals which then go to slaughter um, and and some people eat them and in the farming process obviously all the methane or the transportation or the uh the you know the, the uh, industrial processes produce a lot of co2 a lot of um uh, climate uh, gases and it's, it's not very very good not good at all for the climate it's a huge huge impact um on the on the on the climate oh, I think so, stop swapping cameras. so a plant-based uh, a just and equal uh, plant-based food system is uh better for the animals because no animal is slaughtered or kept in captivity all its life and uh it's more positive for the world and thus for us and all the other animals and life on it Absolutely. And yeah. this is what the Animal Rebellion is, is working so for. So if you haven't uh, met Animal Rebellion yet, it's a sister movement of XR and we're talking out. But I want to jump on the cooking side because I talk a lot and then we on the cooking. So I actually dismantled this plate before from the show. Uh, this amazing plate is all going to go into our tummies tonight. And if you're cooking with us, which I hope you do, then uh, these are the main ingredients you will need. So we have got spinach. Um, should I show we the asparagus? Asparagus underneath, which is beautiful. And beetroots. And again, they are all locally sourced, so UK sourced, mostly seasonal. I actually think beetroot is not in season yet. No. But the asparagus and the lettuce, sorry, the um, spinach. spinach and the spring onion we are going to use are all in season right now. So really, really good and planet friendly. Yep. Um, and the lentils, uh, you can actually put, uh, they're grown in England, not these specific ones, I don't think of it. Um, yeah, use any lentils you want. I think they're they're a UK based ones, which are actually really important to get UK based food. Yeah. So do you want me to do that, or are you going to go on with that? I'm going to be a bit loud, chippy chop. Okay. So chippy chop away. So I just see. Actually, do you want this to be a spread? This a bit. So okay. we are just going to chop up some. Um, I'm losing words. Spinach. Spinach. Spinach first, and going to boil it with the uh, asparagus. And going to put the spring onions on top and leave it there for a bit so they soften up. Then we're going to mix it with the lentils we already pre cooked and then just fill them up into the filo pastry or the what's oh, it? Uh, short crust. Short crust That's and then put pastry. them into the oven for 10 minutes. We're not doing filo pastry. We keep on getting confused with filo pastry, but it's puff pastry and short, short crust. Which is surprisingly vegan as well, isn't it? I know, these are amazing. And these are, are simple. We'll show you. We get them. We get them ready made because we're not um, pastry people at the moment. Pastry people. We could be pastry people. And um, we could be. We will do one day. So obviously, if you if you know how to make pastry, then do so. 
If you don't, then this is a simple and accessible way to, to make these wonderful um, parcels of deliciousness and health. So uh, with regard to the asparagus, these are UK based. Um, they've been coming up uh, for the last few weeks and they go on for another couple of months. If you have a, a bed of asparagus, it's about three years for the bed to start producing um, the asparagus that you can eat. Um, but they last, these beds last for, you know, they can last for 80 to 100 years, even more. And what we do with asparagus is initially you cut them at the bottom from the, the bed and then they're a bit hard at the bottom. So you just bend it like this and it snaps uh, where, it's, where the weak joint is. So instead of throwing this away, you can actually use these in smoothies or in uh, or your compost as well. So we don't actually, we try and use as much as we possibly can. Again, these are very, very healthy, local and seasonal, which is so, so important to us. Mm -hmm. So do you want, I'll just yes. snap these away. So when we were making this recipe for the first time, we really want to put onion into the dish because onion is like a staple food in pretty much all our meals. But then we didn't find onions because they are not in season and they cannot be um, harvested locally at the moment. So what do you do when you don't find locally sourced food? You don't eat that, you eat something else yes, that is local sure. and what is seasonal. So then we found out that spring onions are in season right now. So we just swapped regular red onions to the spring onion. And I think we have got some amazing questions. We do, we actually have, uh, it actually, we were just informed that um, it's the start of Eid today. So a happy Eid and peace and love to all of you and, uh, and respect to all of you who are doing this. It's a, I believe it's a fasting period. Um, so big love to you all for doing this. And stay safe and healthy. I hope yeah, your families are well, uh, wherever you are in the world. It must be a strange Eid this year with lockdown. Because mm -hmm. I know there are lots of gatherings um, that may not happen. So. So yeah, it must be it's just a strange time for everyone, isn't it? So exactly. Respect. Exactly. Uh, we have got a question from Jet. Do you uh, guys grow any of the ingredients yourself, like chive or tomatoes? Yes. So um, we grew our radish. And we got a bucket. This is a huge bucket. And look at this amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and we to respond on the question, we do have chives as well on the. Oh. Oh in front of our window and we've got little tomatoes growing. Yep. They're tiny. And we've got cucumbers out there. Patty pans. Patty pans, courgettes, potatoes. Oh. And they're, they're starting to sprout now, which is amazing. It's going to get on. It takes a while for them to, to actually produce enough potatoes. So it'll be, I think from June onwards, those are the first crop. Um, but these, yeah, these are where our, our, we had cress, which was relatively easy to make, but it was, it's really recommended and I'd recommend um, growing cress. You can grow it on your windowsill. You can grow these on your windowsill. You could grow. We met up with a friend of ours um, at social distancing mm -hmm. today, and um, Sonia grows um, her vegetables sort of half in and half out. And um, they half in the side of the house and half of the outside of the house. So in, she grows her, her spinach in baskets, uh, and it's just really oh, easy for her to deal with, which is great. You know, they're just on the windowsill. Or um, by by the you know the, the porch. So what we're doing these are all, these are um, fresh and beautiful the radishes we have. Um, and uh, as we said, uh, if you've just arrived, Ooh. I shall show you what we're making. We've got one of the radishes that we grew here, and we're making a plant-based uh, uh, parcel with um, at the moment this is short crust pastry. Uh, we have a beetroot and radish mm -hmm. salad. Little tail, a little tail, and which we're putting. Um, we've actually putting uh, apple cider vinegar in it. I we either do that or lemon, but because we're trying to make it as local mm -hmm. as possible, I believe we can make apple cider vinegar in the UK. And we've also the green here, here are the leaves of the of the radish, so you can um, blanch them, which we did, or you can actually, when they're young, probably smaller than this, you can crush them into a pesto. Yes. So this is what we're doing. Can't wait. And you can use any pastry you have access to, whether you buy it in the shop or make it yourself. And I wanted to show you the other version we did with the uh, puff pastry. It is puff pastry. Yeah, this is how it looks like. And we created this little XR logo <laughs> and the heart to make it more fun for... I always keep, keep saying children, but I think everybody's happy to eat the um, decorated puff pastry. Well, I would hope so, because it is amazing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, create the amazing beetroot and this is raw i washed it earlier on because uh, you have to wash it quite hard because there's often quite a lot of 
uh, mud on it because these are obviously root vegetables uh, grown in the ground. And I, I leave this bit here. So this is the bit I hold on to, and then I'll grate as I will show you now. So while you're doing that, um, our spinach and the asparagus is just blanching. Is the word blanching? Yeah. In uh, this pan. And our main ingredient for tonight is going to be lentils. So we filled up the pastries with this mix of lentils and spinach and the asparagus. And we've pre made quite a bit so we don't have to wait for 40 minutes on this show. Normally, lentils take about 30 40 minutes, so it's good to make them. And we like to have a uh, bay leaf in our lentils because it gives them an amazing flavor. And the good thing about bay leaf is that actually you can find them locally as well. So can I just show this? Maybe the other camera to show. Well, there's that one there. Or, um, that yeah, so this, you can see this. It's not decoration. It's actually bay leaf that Toby got from a garden that he was working in, I think. Yeah, I got this from a garden. Um, I was uh, trimming the, the bay leaf hedges and it would have gone to waste. I mean, not waste because it goes into compost. But I thought I'd bring a whole load of this home and we've, we've put it on here for it to dry. And we've, uh, and this is beautiful. So we, you know, this is local. Um, the only, I suppose, carbon footprint is the one that uh, I, I made by bringing it up. So here, I love these food. It's got such, such an amazing color. It's really, really healthy for you. And it's so, so versatile because you can eat it raw, you can roast it, you can boil it. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. And look at that color. Look at that color. I mean, it's just, it's just flamboyant. That's a flamboyant yeah. color. Oh, beetroot is amazing. Yeah. And you can put that in any food. You really can. And it will color everything into this beautiful purple color. So whether you're making a curry or I think you can even make sweet dishes with beetroot. It really gives that extra color and makes it more interesting. So, and it's also very nutritious and has a lot of very good uh, nutritional yeah, yeah. properties. So we are making this beetroot radish salad. Mm -hmm. And as Toby said, we are going to use some apple cider vinegar, which we chose to replace the lemon. We really like the, the, the sour taste of lemon on our food, but you also recognize that it comes all the way from another continent into our kitchen. So to avoid that, we try to use something that is similar but local. And we do this swap for every single item. So what we do sometimes, we look up a recipe and, for example, we swap meat for lentils, lemon to apple cider vinegar, um if there is a vegetable we really like but it's not available locally we just find something that is local and seasonal and we actually never really fail with the recipe <laughs> vegetables just work somehow so if you want to create this recipe and uh, recreate for your family or your friends uh, whom you share it with small social distance then <laughs> look into the blurb and you will find an inspiration recipe that we looked up to prepare our own but literally with this pastry, you cannot go wrong. So pick whatever you, you like, whether it is green lentils or uh, red lentils or even peas and mix it up with the vegetables you find at home, put them into these pastries, fold them up and put them into the oven for 20 minutes and you're pretty much done. And you can uh, make a lot of these quite easily, quite quickly. Yeah, it's extremely simple. And one of the things Dora and I were discussing earlier on was when you look at recipes online, uh, or in a book or whatever, it can be quite daunting because you think, you look at all the ingredients, maybe three or four or five, ten ingredients, and you think, oh, I don't have this, I don't have the lemon, or I don't have um, spinach, or I don't have um, the lentils, or whatever it is. And don't have it. I don't have it. And you get into a bit of a panic, and you think, oh, I can't make this, and you give up. But I think um, either if you're experiencing cooking or you've got a bit of a, a, a little bit of knowledge in what food goes with what or what can be replaced, then you can always find a replacement for the food that you don't actually have at home. And you, there's no point in really going out, driving to the supermarket or the shop just to get that one ingredient. Um, and it would be a shame not to make the food. So we try and you know, have these alternatives. We try and also we experiment because we only have ourselves to experiment on. And it's not that scary. Um, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important point. And you brought it out. It was, uh, uh, it was really important that people do get put off. So there are always um, alternatives and, it's, it's, it's good. and you can always, although we don't like to Google too much and the, the internet is not the greatest thing in the world, you can always Google what, what um, goes with what and 
and what's a good alternative? I'm mean, oh, oh, sorry. One of the biggest alternatives in meals like this for us is we replace meat with, uh, with vegetables. And that's the reason, I mean, you know, it was a plant-based uh, diet that we have, um, transitioning from either uh, an omnivore or a vegetarian to a vegan world or life style, um, then things like that are replaced. And uh, as we said before, lentils has a huge amount of protein, uh, beans, um, green, green leaf uh, vegetables. Loads of I just wanted to comment on your previous note. You said that insulin is not the best, it is a huge footprint. I think it's worth looking into. And the one very good option you can do is call up your grandmother <laughs> and <hug. laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's like a good time to, re uh, to reconnect and look up those old recipes that they might have used in the past when there wasn't so much access to things that we take for granted nowadays. Um, for example, my granddad, he grew up on a very small farm back in Hungary and they didn't... It's very loud. They <laughs> didn't have access to the things we have today. So they were not vegetarians or vegans, but the reason they didn't eat so much meat because they didn't have access to meat anyway and cheese was a luxury. So what they ate was what they grew, which was fruits and vegetables and uh, um, just what they grew luxury. Things they found on the street and from the forest, what and they could forage. Exchange, I'm sure they bartered and so forth with their lo lo uh, neighboring villages uh, and small markets. I mean, again, small markets, uh, are sustainable in a lot of ways and and very attractive in a lot of ways as well. Wow. Uh, a lot of people are tuning in from Colombia, Iran. Hi, Hello. you guys. You and doing? also, Dev says hi from Pakistan, Arizona. How no amazing. Way. That's amazing. Hello, How's everything everyone. over there? How are you doing? Oh, wow. So, uh, huge shout out to the Muslim LGBT network who are watching as well. Big how are you guys doing? Are Please you? comment, ask any questions if you have, and tell us how you are, and tell us what you cook that uh, is climate friendly and we could maybe learn from. Because yeah, we yeah. would love to know some more ideas um, and maybe try them out yeah. if we can find local versions of those. We're always happy and willing and wanting to learn more. I mean, this is one of the things about education and learning and teaching and whatever else. I mean, we're no experts at all. We're just two people doing this. We're not chefs, we're not nutritional experts. We're just just people and we're learning all the time and we, we love learning all the time and this is one of the things humility and being humble and being willing to accept that we don't know everything and it's impossible mm -hmm. to know everything really and that's why it's good that we have a community like extinction rebellion or any rebellion who look out for actions and connect us with science and with politics yeah. and with each other so bring all those different voices together so we can act and uh, there is a lot going on with both Extinction Rebellion and Enemy Rebellion right now. I think the last few weeks it was a really, it was a time for recovery, I would say. And so a lot of things are happening in terms of regenerative culture and building closer connections to each other and recognizing that this situation is really, really horrible for a lot of people around the world. But also there is a very, very big energy that um, is rising right now around the no back, no what? <laughs> no, no, no going back. back campaign. Um, and the build back better, which is and the, yes. So if you are interested in getting back to action, getting back to doing something, because unfortunately the climate situation is not resolved, even though our emissions dropped, it's not still anywhere close to where we should be. No. So if you are ready to get back and work with Extinction Rebellion, look up no going back. There are a lot of um, Actions. actions going on and there is one actually coming up on the 30th of may, so may. The week yesterday yes Next and Saturday. it's a global action anyone can join with strict social distancing so we are not going to protest together in a group because that's not appropriate it's not safe for anyone but we can individually grow uh, grow <laughs> go to council and government buildings and express our opinions and wishes for not wanting to go back to um system that didn't work for us for so many years and is not working for us right now. So we can protest separately in the same location with a safe distance. So that's coming up this weekend. If you're interested, look up No Going Back and this weekend's campaign. And Animal Rebellion is doing an amazing series of talks um, joined with Extinction Rebellion. So it's co-hosted series. And let me just cheat a little bit because my memory isn't that great. So that is called um, Land-based future, why 
sorry, what, why, and what's next. And it is a 60 minutes online uh, workshop that you can join on 28th of May next time. So look it up, plan this future, what, why, and what's next. This is the title of the event series co-hosted by Anime Rebellion and Extinction Rebellion. Which is amazing. It's amazing. And this is amazing because this food is smelling wonderful. Done. So what I'm, what I'm doing now, I mean, this is just being blanched and softened up the asparagus and the spinach. Um, do you want to put some seeds in it? Because we're going to put some seeds. Mm. So what I'm going to do now is I've, uh, I've grated the, um, the beetroot, uh, raw beetroot, as I said before. It was washed thoroughly, had a lot of, um, a lot of mud, uh, mud on it because they're, they're root vegetables. And I've sliced up the two radishes, which are homegrown, and they're very, very simple to make, which is really, really wonderful. Really, really to make, to grow. I'm just going to mix them all together, very simply, just so you know my hands have been fully washed. And they always are clean. So you mix them up together, and the red and the white match the bitterness. Uh, there's a little bit of bitterness and tartness, as it were, of the, um, of the radish that blends very well with the wonderful beetroot. So that's basically that done. And then I get... Things are getting so busy right now. It's exciting. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Then I get a little bit of um, organic apple cider vinegar. There are lots of different kinds of apple cider vinegar. Um, UK based. I don't know if this is UK based. No, this is not that you can find it in the UK. Is so it not? That's it. No, no way. Mm. GP. It says uh, it's got a UK uh, address here, but it's probably for UK. It's being imported, but... Um, Sure? Distributed here, doesn't it? Anyway, you can find it in the UK. So I'm just going to, for about this much, it's quite strong. So I'm just going to do cap two capsules. And it's always better with this kind of thing to put uh, less rather than more, as it is with salt, because you can always add it afterwards. And it's very, very difficult. I don't know how I would take a certain amount of, uh, of the vinegar away. So that's all mixed up. And I put, I'm going to. Add a little bit of salt and pepper, just like that. And that's basically that wonderful, healthy, and extremely lovely looking salad ready. And one of the greatest things, as you can see it's here, it's ready, very beautiful. One of the greatest things, one of the things that we try to do is to do zero waste and to use as much as possible of the products we have, of the things we grow, of the things we buy if we have to. And this is from the radish itself, the leaves. And we're going to blanch these, um, which creates uh, just a, a lovely uh, blanched or vegetable, which is these are healthy, like you would have spinach. So that's one I'm going to do now. I'm going to chop them up, sort of quite coarsely, put them in a bit of hot water, salted water. What's that? <laughs> so. so but things are really speeding up right now. We got a lot of comments. I don't know where to start. Oh, so um, Pam uh, from Harrogate says she loves our food. Thank you so much, Pam. So do we. I hope you're cooking with us. And a lot of other comments. So um, there was a comment about a vegan diet being expensive. It can be expensive if you buy the Ben and Jerry's ice cream and you buy the, the porn, Processed fish fillets, it can be extremely expensive. But what they're trying to do is to cook plant-based dishes that anyone can get in the UK. And they're seasonal and locally sourced and also very, very cheap. Yeah. So all the ingredients we picked, like lentils, they're, they're really quite cheap to get, as well as spinach, especially if you grow it for yourself. Beetroot, Beetroot's beetroot cheap. for ourselves. And the pillow pastry is one of the, the cheapest things Snoffy you can get. So, well, we have the puff pastry and was it like a shortcut? Shortcut. All of them are quite cheap. So, I think there are many, many ways you can make a plant based diet very, very easy and accessible and cheap for yourself. Just like with any other diet, whether you're a vegetarian or an omnivore, there are expensive ways and cheap ways to live on the diet. So, I hope that you find this recipe inspiring yeah. and we might just want to show again what you're making tonight please do this because it's really really beautiful so if you're just joining uh welcome to food rebellion and this is a series of the cooking shows where we try to show cheap easy local 
plant-based vegan alternatives of food that you might already enjoy. And tonight we are making this. Um, what's the plant-based food? <laughs> Maybe I should remove this reddish. <laughs> yeah, so lentil and spinach filled uh, pastry um, pockets with uh, homegrown locally sourced garden sourced <laughs> reddish. <laughs> so this is the green of the reddish that we grew and these are the the meat of the reddish and we put some beetroot for the color and the vitamins as well so how is it going so i think that's just about finished isn't it yes or should we turn it off and swap the right, it's been done for a while i think okay so that's all so here is our yeah, yeah, yeah. sure mm -hmm. so here is our spinach and asparagus which we launched for quite a long time with some nuts and now I'm going to add two cups of lentils. So this is where all of the good protein, good plant-based uh, protein will come into the food. So I'm going to add two cups. And this is going to fill up about four pastries. We might have some leftover, but uh, I think this should be about enough. And can we get some time, please? Please, oh yeah. So this time. This time? This time. Uh, this time. We're running out of time. We are actually running out of time. So we've only got a little bit of time left, and we've got a bit of aloe vera, aloe vera, and we have some uh, bay leaves in here. So the time is actually running out. Uh, so it's a nice bunch of dried thyme, and then we basically scrunch it all together. So where is this thyme from? I believe, well, this is from the market in the, in the High Wycombe, isn't it? But did or you just... get it dry? or did you get Yeah, we got it dry, we got it dry. We're actually growing thyme in the back garden. We just planted it out. So we didn't want to affect, um, cut the leaves off now because this is a time, a crucial time for the plant. So why did you do this like this? Why didn't you just uh, put it straight into the food? Oh, the reason we, I did this like this was because um, the, the branches can, uh, stems can, are quite hard and they can snap off. <laughs> and you don't actually want them caught in your mouth. You've got nail, nail polish. <laughs> I've got lovely nail polish. That was me. <laughs> right, let's pick out the stems then. So, okay, I'm just going to put that back. So, uh, I do like a bit of nail push. Especially in the cooking show. Yep. So there's that. See, these are all long bits and not what we want. So pull that out, pull that out. There's one here. There's one. Cool. Yeah, I've just got a really big finger, so it's very difficult for me <laughs> to be delicate fingers. So you're just going to put this in here? Yes, please. Okay, so it's done. I put it everything in the table. So it's great. That's amazing. So and we have salt, pepper, and we're done. Yep. And we also we have the salad is just about ready. Um, well, it is ready. Uh, we have, what are you doing there? I'm blanching. I'm blanching these. Uh, what are the the radish leaves? Um, and there's a very good source of uh, iron and vitamins and so forth. Yeah, it's interesting that many of the greens of the vegetables that we normally throw away are actually edible. So it's worth taking a look if uh, you can eat them yeah. or they are good for you because then you save so much money as well. You don't have to go and buy the greens. Exactly. And plus you also um, waste less. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is important to actually double check because, for example, rhubarb itself is wonderful and edible, um, but the leaves are not. Uh, they can be poisonous. So it is always good to check. But with, for example, radish and with beetroot, a lot of people don't need know that you can chop off the leaves of the beetroot and uh, use them again, blanch them up as a salad, and it goes really, really well with the going lemon or with uh, apple cider vinegar or anything with salt. And it's really nice in Greece. I was lucky enough to be brought up in Greece, and they actually have the the the, salad, the beetroot salad leaves as a as a separate salad. They actually um, it's a well-known salad in Greece, and it's oh, so so beautiful. It's it's a sweet, with bitter taste. Really, really nice. The magic is starting now. Uh -oh. So I got the pastry over here that we're going to fill in. And actually the lentils smell really amazing. I just uh, had a deep inhalation session yep. and it was really good. So if you get um, a pastry like this, we got the, where should I go? We got this one, but again, pastry is something you can make on your own if you have uh, the time and fantasy and energy to do that. So I would, I think you're also interested to try it out at some point. Right now we just got the, the cheapest, easiest version and, um, Pastry sheet like this, um, we will divide into four sections and make four little, um, what do you call them, pockets? Pockets, parcels. Yeah, yeah parcels. And should I just cut this up? Please do. I think you can put it on the computer or not something. 
Oh, sorry. There we go. Thank you. So I'm not very good with her computer now. Well, she's I'm not very good with computers, basically. Bit old, bit old. There's nothing wrong with old. There's nothing wrong with old. What's the different stage of life? I'm wise, you say. So what are you doing? Now? I'm just going to oh, fill in the, the pastries, and in terms of quantity, we use this. Uh, it's the ladle. It is the ladle. Ladle um, to measure the quantity of the lentil. So it would be like one flat ladle into one parcel. So if you have never done pastry filling before, it can look a bit intimidating and scary because it can start getting gooey in your hand and look uncontrollable. But I would say stick to it and just give your best. Wash your hand before, just like you always do, but especially now. And then boom, boom, let's put them together from the two sides and make sure that there's a bit of overlap and just push them down. Like, I don't know if you can see it properly. So they don't open. And in the end, you will see that uh, there's an open section. So you want to like push it hard together. So it's like you're closing the ends. And what I normally do is when I put them into the oven, I turn them around like this. So even if they open, they open in the bottom, so it will not crack open on, on the top. So this is us done with the first one. Well, I mean, it is, it's really, really simple, as you can see, really, really beautiful. Um, you can make your own pastry or you can buy it ready-made, which we did because we're not very good at pastry making at the moment, but it's something that maybe we'll do a show about because I think it can be done quite easily. And obviously we can do it in a, in a vegan way. Um, a plant-based way, uh, without eggs, without dairy, and so on and so forth. I just want to a uh, shout out um, to Earth Day Switch, earthdayswitch.org. It's a global mov movement switching to safer banks and energy services. It shows people how their bank and, and or energy supplier perform in terms of fossil fuel investment and being green. I mean, how amazing is that? It's information that we all need so we can choose you know, better. It's, it's one of the one of the demands of XR is to tell the truth. So or maybe have, choose none of them. Or maybe choose none of them. Maybe we don't need the banking system and maybe we don't need the, the energy power, supplier. Energy I power. mean, there is so much debate about renewable energy as well. Is it is it what's going to save us? I'm not sure, personally. Well, so you might just want to not use so much energy, maybe switch or let off and you don't need them. <laughs> that's a good point. And it's, it's uh, yeah, everyone's saying we have to replace the energy for greener yeah, fuels or sustainable yeah, fuels. Yeah. But we may as well um, uh, try and reduce our use of it. So, you know, switch off lights. Um, don't heat your house uh, all the time. Put on a, a jumper or a woolly hat, or not a woolly hat, because that's uh, not vegan and that's oppressive to the animals and not very good at all. But uh, a warm hat, warm socks, warm gloves. So you don't burn fossil fuels unnecessarily. Um, I just want to do a, a shout out as well. Um, I had a great, we had a great um, comment from Techno Tony, what a name, so hello Techno Tony, Tony, on YouTube, and he says, humanity needs to plant as much as possible, re-green the earth, exactly. plant seeds for food, for ourselves and to share, this is very important, to share, plant seeds for the pollinators, plant trees, just keep planting, such an amazing and important and direct message, and it's actually a really simple thing to do, we, we're finding this out, you know, we grow, we're starting to grow our own vegetables, and it's actually really, really simple. Um, you can get seeds very, very cheaply and just start them in your windowsill. And you can actually grow them all in your windowsill if you don't have a garden or a veranda. Um, there are allotments out there that you can start using and share or put your name down on a list. And maybe one day you get an allotment. Uh, and that's about 10 to 30 pounds a year for a whole allotment. So you can start by thinking about it now. Um, Earthex, which is amazing. Deb on Facebook. Hello, Deb. Hello, Facebook. Um, says that, uh, very, very I mean, this makes us feel very humble, that uh, we prove that vegan cooking can be fun. Oh my God, you're fun. Uh, well, <laughs> we're simple, that's for sure. And it can be simple. A bit ridiculous, but thank you if you find yeah. us fun. And we do, we do, uh, we find it fun. We, we, we do like find it fun. fun, yes. And what is more fun <gasps> is the pastries are ready. No way. So we filled up, oh, can you see it? I'm not sure. We filled up four of these with the lentil, spinach, asparagus mix, and we are going to put them into the oven. So it's about 25 minutes, 200 degrees Celsius, and then you are ready. Amazing. Watch yourself. 
So, they're going in, which is absolutely amazing. I can't wait. I love, I love, I love food. I, I very much love food, and I've been a plant-based uh, vegan for about four years, three and a half, four years, and I have not lost out on taste, on nutrition. I mean, I'm stronger than I have ever been. I love myself more. I think this is one of the things that I found surprising is how much I love myself more from going plant-based because probably subconsciously I knew all the harm that was, I was doing to the planet, um, to the animals involved. And mainly initially I went vegan for the animals. Um, and now I'm doing my best. I'm not harmless, but uh, with regard to the, plant, uh, the food I eat, it's not oppressive, it's not killing animals directly, and it makes me feel better and, and healthy now. It's, it's, I mean, the stamina I have as a gardener, compared to what I used to have as a meat eater, it's amazing now. So, for me, it's great. For you, it would be amazing too. So, um, I want to give a bit of help with local um, and seasonal eating. Because when you first get started, it can be a bit difficult. Like, where do you go for information? Where do you know? How do you know whom you ask and so forth? So there is a website I would like to recommend. I just want to clarify that I have no affiliation with the website. It's not something that I started or any, anyone who I know started. It's called uh, eattheseasons.co.uk. And you can literally look up what are the, the food items in season. So I might actually just show it. If maybe our lovely Karen and Christian could share. Sure. I can probably see it. So, for example, the uh, seasonal food of the week is radishes. So that's why we're eating radishes because um, we've got them in season in the garden as well. And we would pick vegetables that are on the list. So asparagus is in our meal today, for example. Um, carrots are coming up soon. Um, and then spinach, we have that in the lentil pie. And spring onions, we have them in the pie as well. So that's one thing I wanted to share. And another really interesting thing, just back on the nutritional value uh, idea or question. So there we go. This is an application called Chronometer that I started to use when I first went plant-based vegan because I was really curious about my nutritional values. Am I having enough carbohydrates or protein? Do I have enough healthy uh, fatty acids and so on? So then I was recommending this application, which is free. Anyone can um, reach it. And again, like I have no connection to the creator of Chronometer either. So I'm just recommending it as a friend. But basically, I typed in all the, well, probably most of the ingredients we are using tonight. So puff pastry, spinach, asparagus, salt, and so on. And if you scroll below, you can see all the different attributes that that food has. I mean, all together, all the ingredients. So for example, if you're really curious about your protein, you can scroll all the way down below and check how much um, cysteine and lysine, and I don't even know these protein types, but if you're really, really worried about how much protein you get, you can check this out. And interestingly, for example, this meal would cover about, I would say maybe a third or half of all your protein intake, depending on whether you're a male or a female, a child or an adult. But it's really interesting to see if you open another window and put in meat items, for example, you would find that actually you get the same amount of protein, if not more, but without the unhealthy um, fats that you would get from eggs, for example, or, or meat products. So anyway, I don't want to get into the health side of our cooking tonight, but uh, I think it's very, very interesting to look into what vitamins you get from certain foods. So I hope you find this useful. I found it really, really, really handy when I first started looking into it. Yeah, Dora introduced me that to, to that earlier on. And I was like, what? It tells you so, so much. And a lot of people are very interested in this. And also concerned, and rightly so, you know, we, if we're transitioning from uh, one type of diet to another, it's really, really good to know what you're getting yourself into um, and, and, and what's important to you as well. You can work out what's important to you, whether it's protein, iron, calcium, which you can, just so you know, you can get from plants and amazing, amazing amounts and uh, very tasty and healthy. What have you done here? What have I done? What is this? Well, I just thought I'd uh, I'd set it up as a little- It's beautiful. It's not that beautiful. <laughs> 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 right, let's come here. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, you want to introduce your meal? All right, this is the meal that we've 
sort of made just now. So this is the uh, the beetroot and radish salad. So it's great. It it's in there somewhere. Okay. Uh, uh, the redness of the beetroot has been absorbed by the uh, radish. The green. the green is the the are the leaves of the radish and they're blanched. And the uh, the pastry delicacy right there is an XR, as you can see. XR pastry. XR pastry. It's a rebellious plant-based parcel of deliciousness. That's what it is. It might be not delicious. I think you should try it. Well, ooh, that's a very good point. So shall we? Yeah, that is, very, here. That is a very good point. Um, but do you want to try it? Yeah. Okay, so do you want to buy it? <laughs> Hang on. Okay, so I'll tell you what. I'll try the salad. You Should try that. Should that lady and the tramp beside in this side and this side and this side? Oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> Shall we? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to, would you like a bit of the salad? Yes, please. And can you put some greens on top? Certainly so, can. Look at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and look at the colours. That's one of the beautiful things about a plant-based diet is the other colours. All right, so you want to feed me? You want to go for vegan cheesy? Yeah, go yeah on. Okay, let's go. Vegan <laughs> cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Oh, that's actually mm. really good. Mm. Mm. So you've got the, the bitter or the sourness of the radish, sweetness of the beetroot. The radish leaves actually taste really, really rich and nice. Mm. A bit spinachy, really, really good. Yeah, and you know when spinach tastes really good, tastes irony and strong, and mm, yeah. that's what it tastes like. So that's really, really lovely. We put a bit of apple cider vinegar on it uh, as a little dressing. Do you put some salt for it? Yeah, a bit of salt and pepper. Uh, and that's for you to decide and your taste. Some people don't like mm. some. Some people don't like pepper. And would you like to try some of this? Yes. Should I cut, Should I cut it? I would just use my hands. Oh, the best. Yeah, I don't understand people who eat. So there Pizza goes the extinction rate. <laughs> Pizza with forks and knives for me is the same. Um, I don't but want to bite into extinction rebellion. Come on, but I might do. Just chew on it. So anyway, this has been food rebellion. Just want to see if there are any comments before we go. But we'll eat these for us. We'll have them taste. Ding. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Peace and love. Oh my god, <laughs> this is so good. Mm. So I would say the um, puff pastry is better than the short crust. Short crust. Actually, it does. It is lighter. Mm -hmm. I say that the short crust is good if you want to eat it the next day because it's better to for transporting, like That's if true. you're taking it as a packed lunch or a picnic, and it's easier to slice up. Um, yeah. So just to finish off, so we see if we've got any more comments. Yeah, and. Um, just also want to remind you all, wherever you're watching, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, that the show is going to be available on the Extinction Rebellion UK Facebook page. So you can go back and cook with us again if you want. And if you're watching on Instagram, first of all, thanks for joining us. Secondly, you see a um, narrow version of us. So if you want to see everything we did outside of your screen, then come back to Facebook and watch us. <laughs> That's where the fun happens. Yeah, you miss, you miss out. <laughs> And then we're here serious. And you're going to be here next week as well. So please do join us next week for an episode. The of, topic is secret. Another episode of Food Rebellion. Yep. Um, and in the meantime, don't forget to check out what's going on in Extinction Rebellion. There are a lot of events online. So just go to Extinction Rebellion UK events and check out what's happening and join this week for May the 30th. Yep. I just heard about the No going route. back. Yeah, did you? I haven't yet. Um, and also, you can, uh, wherever you are in the UK, and now near enough the whole world, there are local groups, and we we uh, reconnected with our local oh. group. XR Chilterns, um, amazing bunch of people, really, really passionate, really, really dedicated to trying to make the world a better place. You know where the flag is? Yes, there. Yeah, they're big again. Yeah, on the other. On the oh, cool. Trying to make the world a better place, trying to make it a better place for their children, for their loved ones, for the all life, for animals, for the trees, for you, for me, and for Dora, and for the amazing Christian and Taryn who are behind the screens. Hello, you love. And for our loved ah, ones. Leave us alone. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so the local groups are really, really important. You can find them either going through Extinction Rebellion site itself or just probably type in 
Extinction Rebellion and your local area, Extinction Rebellion in Oxford, Extinction Rebellion in Bromley, Extinction Rebellion uh, Aberdeen. Or just start your own. And you can find all the information about your own from the Extinction Rebellion website. Before we go, I want to- Animal Rebellion local groups as well. Same, same. Yeah, yeah. Before we go, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Extinction Rebellion Children's. This is our um, local, what is it, uh, symbol? With the, what kind of beard is it? It says act now, and I think that's where, that's a kite, I believe. It's beautiful. We, we have a lot of kites over here. And also huge shout out to Anime Rebellion, and you can see the flag in the background behind the camera. Yeah. Um, and uh, check out the online event series about the plant-based food system that are starting with Extinction Rebellion this week. And join your work. local group or start a local group as well. That is a good point. You, you know, you can, with the, it's a decentralized movement. So you can start a group, you can start your own actions, look at the principles and the demands that Extinction Rebellion and Animal Rebellion have. They cover everything very, very equal and as unoppressive, unoppressive, inoppressive, unoppressive, uh, whatever it is, uh, as, as they can be. So uh, the flag was the wrong way around, it's mirrored. But uh, that's fine. <laughs> Um, so just a, a quick before we go, shout out to everyone on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. To Marius on YouTube, says thanks for the ideas. Thank you for all your messages. Thank you for all your love. Um, I think we have been going on for an hour now. So if you stayed for the whole hour, you're the best. Crazy. <laughs> if you join in at any time, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you join us next week as well. Can yes. we do our goodbye singing? Which one? So long. Farewell. Our feet is in goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> well, wasn't that just utterly wonderful? <laughs> Thank you so much to Toby and Dora for another wonderful episode of Food Rebellion. As ever, if you want to find out more uh, about Extinction Rebellion, you can go to extinction.earth for anyone who lives in the UK and join your local group. Or if you're in anywhere else in the world, go to extinction.global, sorry, rebellion, apologies, rebellion.global, and join your local group wherever you are in the world. We're now active in 68 different countries across the world. Thank you, Toby and Dora, for another wonderful and inspiring planet-friendly meal. Peace, love, and respect, y'all. <laughs>